Okay. Xavier Brown. Hey, Xavier. He be on my comments a lot. I love you, Brandy. <laughs> when are you moving to L.A.? I'm moving to L.A. when the Lord tells me to go. Okay. Waiting on heaven. What are your thoughts about people having dreams and visions that the rapture might happen? Various is a load of crap. There is no free trip. Rapture scripture speaks against that. You're not going to find it anywhere in the Bible. You're not going to find a free trip rapture anywhere in scripture. And if you do, it's something somebody added or they tried to look into something that really wasn't there. And no. And if you want a very good thorough teaching on that, I mean, breaking it down, breaking it down. David Eels has a video five hours long. Holy Spirit filled, breaking down scripture by scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept, how there is no biblical pre trip rapture. And the video is called The Church and the Tribulation. Watch it. It's good. So, no, it ain't going to happen soon because there is no pre-trip rapture. Scripture makes it clear that Jesus... It, it's crazy that people do this because it's like it's blatant in the Bible. <laughs> like Matthew says, after the tribulation of those days, after all these things have happened, then Jesus is going to come back. I believe in a... I guess you could say post-trib then. Yeah, that's what I believe in. If you want to give it a title, because that's what the Bible says. So, it's kind of... There's really no debate if people know how to read and pay attention. Um, he's going to come back right before he releases his wrath on the wicked. He's going to come get you. And uh, it's, it's funny because uh, there's so many scriptures that are in Revelation that say that Christians are going to be turned over to the, to the Antichrist, to Obama basically. And that the Lord is going to deliver us into his hand to, to do what he wants to do with us. So if Christians are going to be taken in the rapture, what Christians are going to be here to go through the tribulation period and to be to do with the Antichrist? And they say, well, oh, there's a, there's a rapture and then there's a second. No, it's not. It's not nothing. That ain't, go, that ain't nowhere in there. People done made that stuff up because they don't want to be here to deal with it. You're not going to find it nowhere. Like, where did y'all even get that from? Where do you see anything about a second coming and a rapture, two different events? No, it's talking about the same event. The rapture is his second coming. It's not two separate events. It don't even make sense. Why would God take some people and then leave? And you got so many people on YouTube, honey, they done jumped off of scripture and just, just jumped right into the lake. They saying stuff that you ain't going to find nowhere in scripture. Well, God revealed to me he's going to leave some Christians behind to just do duty and to save souls. And he's going to, God didn't tell you nothing. He's full of crap. <laughs> that didn't come from the Lord. That ain't nothing but a whole bunch of confusion. How are you getting revelations that ain't that ain't nowhere supported in scripture? No. It's like, honey, you're going to have to get toe up and tortured. Like, just deal with it. Like, you got to suffer with Christ. That's, that's what you called to do. If you want to be intimate with him and roll with him, you got to suffer what he suffered. Stop trying to escape it all the time. I mean, it really don't matter what they believe. It's going to come to pass anyway. And I think people need to really seek the Lord about their truth right now because they're going to be very disappointed when they at that guillotine and they looking for the rapture and you got bitterness in your heart towards the Lord because you was like, well, where the rapture at? The rapture, you about to get raptured. Your head about to get raptured right now. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm sorry. Uh, let me see. A moment that you would like to relive. <sighs> Nothing. Yeah, I don't have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have no moment that I want to relive. I don't. Yeah, I'm so biased with questions like that. What's your favorite color, Jane? My favorite color be changed. Last year it was rose gold. Well, right now it's like Bordeaux. Maroon, purplish, you know, that deep, dark uh, color. But it changed all the time. I can't answer questions like that. Um, and who is that? All glory to the king. Okay, so this is Tara. Tara said, Has God ever spoken to you about the way you dress? I wear jeans and have never felt convicted about it. I've heard a lot of women talk about how they never wear pants and how they cover their hair before they go out. They also keep their hair long because they think that men should only have short hair and neither of the two should mix. That women should only have long hair and men should only have, okay. But I don't know if that's the right interpretation of those verses. I'm not sure. They even say that they've had dreams of women going to hell for wearing pants 
or clothes that pertain to a man? What do you think? I think I'm going to stay humble and God reveals things like that to different people at different times. So, hey, if it's, if it's wrong to wear pants, he hasn't told me yet. However, I do personally, um, I was looking to dress more modestly. So I've been into like more skirts and dresses, but that's not me making it like a mandatory that we have to dress that way. That was just my personal choice. I just feel like it's just a more decent look more modest that doesn't mean that pants are wrong i got skinny jeans i like the way i look in skinny jeans so i wear skinny jeans <laughs> but i agree with what casper told you i mean because he already replied so i agree with what he said i can't speak for people's testimonies like i'm i'm not gonna put my mouth on that i don't know what they dreamt or what the lord showed them um seek him about it ask him see what he says but as for it like pants being uh pertaining to like men's clothing well i was thinking maybe it could have been a possibility because of the whole 1920s thing when women started to rebel they wanted to prove if they can do what a man could do they started dressing like a man but at the same time like, like what casper said with different cultures there's men if you want to take jesus and his disciples they wore tunics so that's like a dress <laughs> so it's kind of foolish to me if it is god he hasn't told me that yet so I don't want to say it's not, or it is God. But uh, I do think it's kind of foolish to say that it's a sin for a woman to wear pants because it's manly. But yet Jesus and the whole Hebrew garb was like dresses. They were robes. They were like tunics. So that's not pants. Yeah, they're, they're no different than what you would see. Maybe fitted differently than what a dress would be today. And people in different countries, they wear their little kilts, you know. So that's, it's the intent. I think when it comes to that, it's definitely, are you trying to look like a woman? <laughs> Some people try to look like a woman, you know? Like, I just you should use discernment with that. I think as long as you just live by the Holy Spirit when you're shopping, you ain't got to worry about all of that. Um, you say, has he ever convicted me about the way I do? Yeah, he's convicted me. He's used so many people through my YouTube channel to tell me I show too much cleavage. And at the time, I genuinely did not see it. <laughs> like, I was just recording, just like, just vlog and be myself and especially my Beyonce video people still call on the video why is your titties hanging out why is you half naked on here trying to preach and at that time I, I, my boobs weren't even really out I'm a thick girl so it really was just skin like kind of chunky you know so it really wasn't even cleavage but I didn't really see anything wrong with it when I was dressed <laughs> like that I guess like since I've like matured a little bit I was like, oh my God. I go back and look at some of my videos like, why did you wear that? <laughs> you can't even take the video down. Like, it's old and everything. But I don't know. In a lot of my clothes, I don't really have a wardrobe that's really just, like, covered up like that. I personally want to invest in some turtlenecks because I like how they look with afros. So I'm going to get some turtlenecks, especially this winter coming up. But that's why I just bought me a sweatshirt because I ain't got time. I don't dress cute and all. If, unless I got somewhere to go or like a special occasion, I don't be dressing up. I just be, and y'all can tell from my videos, I wear a t-shirt, some pajama pants or some jeans or something. And if you don't want to see my chest, I'll just put my sweatshirt on <laughs> or something. So yeah, that's my answer to that. Is that all the questions? Uh, let me see. Okay. DMR868. She said, my life looks like a dud. It's stagnant. It's like a waste of space. Like I'm just here. Nothing I'm doing is for spiritual growth. I like my job. I hate the long, long hours. I can't seem to get up for it nor be on time. I'm always late or not going. I'm not reading or praying because I don't have time. Or when I do have time, I use it for other things instead of God. I'm not motivated for anything but to lay in bed and sleep. I feel like I'm wasting my life. Just the endless cycle of work, sleep, and eating to pay bills for things I don't own. Hopelessness. I felt like this for a month. Have you ever felt this way? If so, how did you get through it? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I did a whole vlog like a couple months ago, suicidal, saying that's exactly how I felt. How did I get through it? Uh, well, 
I'm going to touch on two things. First thing, when Christians feel like that, always, I would say the first thing you should do is check for a spirit. Because sometimes spirits just sneak up on you. You didn't open the door to something that you don't always know when they come in. So you wonder why you just depressed all of a sudden and you just miserable. And that's the first thing I did when I was doing those vlogs. I was miserable. I hated my life. The video is actually titled, I hate my life. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I did, I, I often do this. I often do this just in case there's a spirit. I bonded up the spirit of depression. Uh, write down everything that you're feeling. Like you said, hopelessness, that's, that's probably a spirit. Hopelessness, loneliness, depression, idleness, like all that stuff. I bonded up those particular spirits and I commanded them to depart from me and to leave me. They always leave. And I kid you not, right afterwards, all that depression was gone. All that moping that you was doing <laughs> and just being miserable, like, oh, woe is me. My life is just, oh, God, don't love me. That was a spirit. They're, I mean, they are something. They can manipulate emotions like crazy. Like you would never know as a demon the way they can do that. But, honey, they get all up in there. They get in your mind. They get your feelings, your flesh. <laughs> like It's like you are one entity with that spirit. But, um, no, when the spirit left, I, all that crap left. I wasn't even depressed or anything. I felt kind of corny because I was like, oh, there was a spirit the whole time. <laughs> and you just ear vlogging about it. So that's the first thing I would check. Is, uh, is it a spirit or not? Second thing, if you're feeling all of that, which, yeah, I have felt all those things, somewhere you stop believing God's word. And I say that because when you believe the word of God, I always talk about this. There's two different mindsets and perspectives that a Christian can have. You can either have the mind of Christ or a carnal mind. What a carnal mind is going to give you is all of the facts all the details, all of the negatives in your life because you don't have a sovereign mindset over what you're dealing with and over what you have in Christ. So all you see is the negative. So I, I wouldn't even really go into the details about that because it just sounds like you, you're somewhere you just, you're just not, you're probably not even feeling yourself with the word. <laughs> that's really just all that is. And that's why I said, um, I can't deny that Christians feel that, you know, that we experience those trials and we do go through feeling that, but at the same time, you already got the answer to it. You got to feel it. You feel yourself with the word. You're not reading the word if you feel like that. I can assure you you're not. Because the word is life. And if you're really feeding your spirit and your mind that, you're not going to be feeling like that. And it's going to renew your um, your eyesight, your spiritual eyes. You're going to put on the mind of Christ because now you're putting his word back in your spirit. Now I promise you, you're going to come right up out of that. You will. So uh, when it comes to you not reading the word, that's just your flesh. The carnal mind, well, the carnal mind, the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. So, of course, you're not going to read your Bible. <laughs> it's not really anything concerning you personally. It's just like you went back to, like, the old man who doesn't like God, don't really like the things of God. That's why you laying in bed and you sleeping, probably watching TV. You're doing everything the flesh wants to do. But when you put your mind back on Christ and you start um, seeking him again, just reading the Bible, put, get the word in you. You're going to snap right out of that, I promise you. It's just the corona mind. So uh, don't ever not read your Bible. It's dangerous. You don't never go a day without reading the word. You better read. <laughs> get you some life somewhere. You got to jumpstart by watching a video, honey. You better get in that word. You're going to snap right out of that. That's all that is. That's just details of the corona mind. Okay, so JM. Girl, I almost pronounced your name so wrong just say home girl because she commented on my videos a lot okay she said um i'm curious as to how the holy spirit dealt with you on braids in particular braiding your real hair <sighs> i already don't wear fake hair and so i'm deciding if braiding is wrong even with my natural hair because i came across a scripture that said in first timothy 2 9 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with brooded hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So you're not asking me about hair weaves. You're not asking me like about box braids or nothing except about braids. I don't think nothing's wrong with braiding your hair. Your hair. Not you attaching something to your hair. I don't think there's nothing wrong with braiding your hair. Not convicted about that at all. The Lord has only convicted me about uh, just a lot of superficial things that we like to really indulge in. Hair weaves and cosmetics and the fake nails. You know, all that whole jazz. All that is the marine kingdom. He don't like that. 
But I mean, it's, it's your hair. If it's your crown and it's what he gave you, you got to style it. <laughs> you know, like, um, and like I said, this is just stuff, you know, just be led by the Holy Spirit. Ask him, you know, just ask him to show you what's, uh, what's of him, what's not of him. You know, like how he exposed the whole dreadlocks thing to me, how that's actually a uh, marine spirit. He, child, I, I had conviction out the water with that. He would not have, he didn't give me no peace about it. And I was using it as an excuse. Well, I can't get a weave and. Uh, the closest thing you can get to box braids is dreadlocks, right? And I was like, well, it's my hair. I can. He's like, nope, 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 no. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so uh, some hairstyles do originate from certain uh, cults and you know different religions and stuff. But uh, no, I don't think it's nothing wrong with braid your own hair. And as far as that scripture goes, um, I haven't really studied it or really got any uh, personal word from God about it. But I think at that time. I think the women in that particular church, they were probably very rich or they were new. How did they say it? I read something about it before. I think they were very wealthy believers. And I think they were kind of like serving as a stumbling block for other believers because they would come to church all gaudy and stuff. You know, they had their jewelry on and they had their hair. I think it was just the fact that they had very elaborate hairstyles that would really cause somebody to stumble or really just uh, envy them. And I think Paul's perspective is just kind of like, well, first of all, the fact that you indulge in it that deep, like there's some vanity there and that's, that's antichrist. You know, God is really about selflessness. He's about humility, denying yourself. It's not about you. So why are you like got all this stuff on? Like, I mean, you're worshiping yourself. It's not that there's anything wrong with jewelry or that you can't wear jewelry or something like that. I think it was more so just, um, that probably was just a vibe. They could have been real snooty very superficial they had the elaborate hairstyles and they were adorned all the jewelry you know how they do all the bougetto women <laughs> they're really that's heavy marine kingdom i promise people who do the whole nine they got the nails too and the jewelry and the makeup and the weave like yeah that's probably what they were doing do i think there's anything wrong with just like braiding your hair like no i think he just want everybody to be on the same level when it came to humility you don't want to be a stumbling block of somebody say, well, she can wear it. Which that's what Christians do. They always say that. Well, I got convicted, but I see Heather Lindsay still wear it. You know, so that's why he said that. Like, no, first of all, you're not practicing the, the spiritual law of selflessness. Why do you even have all that on? Like, you're doing too much. <laughs> like, it's not necessary. Take it off. So, uh, and like I said, I'm answering that. But you can always go to the Lord about that for yourself. And he can give you further revelation on it. But, um, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all y'all asked me. So, I'm out there, girl. Bye!